We're in Food Service Power Plant Network. Yo, friends, it's Monday night. It is so great to be with you. It has been an awesome couple weeks um, at the Zumba Fed conference last week, the Food Service Equipment and Design Global Thought Leadership Summit, where I got to finally meet in person Z, the cook. And uh, I am beyond excited to have her join us tonight. Tonight's going to be an, an amazing night. Z is someone with unbelievable energy, incredible vision, and she's just making it happen. She's someone that takes action and builds and grows, and she affects so many people in our industry, in, in my side of the industry. You know, the, the equipment, the design, the supplies. I didn't realize how connected Z was to so many of my friends. So tonight's going to be an incredible night. A couple things. First, hi. If you are joining us from LinkedIn, welcome. If you're joining us from the Food Service Power Plant Network on Facebook, welcome. If you are joining us from the K-12 Power Plant Network, welcome. We're so glad to see you. We hope tonight is informative, uh, hopeful. Uh, a, a note for you. I would encourage you to grab a notepad and a pen. Always, always, always our guests share insights, um, nuggets of wisdom, stories about their lives, lessons learned, quotes that have been impactful, books that have that are relevant to all of our lives. And Z will have those tonight. So you might grab a notepad and pen and write some things down that you hear along the way. And then tonight before you're going to bed, you can rethink, you know what, what did Z say in that moment? I wonder how that affected her. And then if you want to message her, you can, and she'll probably tell you. Uh, so grab a notepad and pen. Second, you are welcome to ask questions or play comments or stream yard here. Uh, you're welcome to say, yo, Z, you're welcome to ask her a question. Anything that comes up, she and I are open books and we are happy to share. Um, and before we go get her, listen, a, a huge thank you to so many people. First, our food service power plant community, 2100 strong. Thanks for being a part of what we're doing. Positive mindset tools and development, community engagement, all of those things. We're so glad for your willingness to share your journey, encourage others, support the industry and dream together. Also, the amazing team at Zumba Group who put on that awesome conference last week and who helps support this and make this possible, who's said, you know what, we want to help spread this message of positive mindset tools, and we want to be a part of what you're doing. So thank you to the whole team at Zumba and then the amazing team at Craven Company. If you haven't checked out our website, fspowerplant.com, that has been entirely built by Chelsea and Eric and Aaron and the, the entire amazing team, uh, Gwen, over at uh, Craven Company. They're doing incredible work with marketing, social media, websites for the food service industry. Um, you're going to want to go check them out. So thank you to them. Hey, let's go find our amazing guest, Z the Cook. Z! Hi! <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Thank you so much for having me this evening. Oh my gosh, I am uh, so glad that you joined us. Zena Dater's in the house. Hi, Zeno. I'm so glad to see you. Um, you know what, you fo following some of your story, which I know you're going to tell us in a minute, just some of your career journey, um, you just have the energy of someone who it seems like is dreaming five steps ahead, who has huge vision, who has um, huge passion, and it just kind of lives out of you. It's something that you can see just watching you network with people last week. So I, thanks for joining us and being willing to share that with our community. Thank you so much. That's, I really appreciate you. And likewise, I mean, I can say the same thing about you. So I'm glad to be here with somebody who is just the same way. So thank you. Heck yes. Heck yes. Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Oh my gosh. I, uh, I hope I get to see you soon. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Z, um, you, you, you started Z the cook a few years ago. Can you tell us just some of your career journey, how you got to a place to start Z the Cook, and then tell us what Z the Cook is and, and does and, and, and who you and your company are. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So, you know, from a very young age, I would say very young, like younger than I thought, right? I, I always say 16, but it, it started way younger than that. I always knew that what I was being taught in life and what I was being directed towards um, wasn't, didn't feel right to me. I, I was being fed the recipes to friendship, the recipes to success, the recipes to love in a way that wasn't resonating with who I truly was and how I truly felt from within. And so I was hearing these things and my intuition was telling me something very different. So I was always known at a young age as the rebel in my family. I was always going kind of against the grain, you know, um, always asking my parents questions, questioning the things they were trying to like make me, you know, believe and, you know, be that way. Right. So they were good at guiding, but I just wasn't going to put up with like being defined by what society or culture 
yeah. or the environment around me was saying, right? So for me, I called it a recipe. That's not my recipe. I have my own recipe. And, and that whole thing just was stemming at a very young age. And when I was 16, I knew that I was going to change the world for the better. I knew that I had like this vision in my mind that when I'm older, I'm going to own a business that's going to change people's lives for the better. And I'm going to lead a large team and we're going to be impacting people's lives um, in a positive way. But I still was not sure what kind of business it was going to be. I had no idea it was going to be food service. I had no idea it was going to be cooking classes. I wasn't even a good chef. You know, I was a middle child. And I had two older sisters, so they were always the ones helping my mom in the kitchen uh, while I was just, you know, and I had two younger brothers. So I was like a middle child, kind of figuring out my way, you know, in the family lifestyle growing up. So I, uh, as, an, as a young entrepreneur, like entrepreneurship mindset, I knew I wanted to work in many industries until I found what was feeding my soul so that I could really connect with something in a passionate way. So immediately um, I started working at the age of 14 as a receptionist. Um, and then I worked at a floral agency and at the floral, um, sh at the floral shop, I, I was always um, helping to assist with uh, weddings and receptions and occasions. So at a young age, I was in the hospitality industry, working with people, planning, mm -hmm. um, creating arrangements. So I loved flowers. I still do till now. I still love to create. Um, and then I left the floral, right? So I was in real estate, you know, secretary, went to floral. Then I went to United Airlines for two years. I worked in reservations. I learned a lot about customer service at United Airlines. And then I went to the medical industry and I was a medical assistant. I got certified. I was giving people injections, meeting people all the time. And I eventually went into administrative medicine and then into nursing school. So I went through a lot of different industries and I realized that I love to work. So I, I wouldn't say I'm a workaholic anymore. I used to be a workaholic. I've, I've definitely been more mindful of that now that I, you know, I've grown up, but I used to love just to work, you know, school for me, it wasn't the route to success for me, for me, school was like, okay, like that was just for personally. And you'll hear, you'll hear that from a lot of entrepreneurs, right? That, you know, that route wasn't right for them. So for me, it was like, you have to go to school, you have to get a degree, you have to have to have, that's the recipe I'm telling you just wasn't my recipe, right? Yeah. So my, my recipe was totally different. So being that I was working so much, I actually got to a point in my mid twenties where I decided it was time to slow down and stop everything. I was also going to school, of course. So I stopped going to school. I stopped working. I had um, an opportunity in my life at the time to just pause. And in that moment of pausing, I quieted the noise, you know, like there was no more work responsibilities, no more school responsibilities. It just, it was quiet. And I found myself in the kitchen. <laughs> Finally. Wow. <laughs> Finally found myself in the kitchen because I was so busy living life, running around, you know, keeping busy, trying to figure things out when really all I really needed to do was stop everything and slow down because in that silence, mm. I received this amazing moment where I was chopping veggies, cooking meals, creating colors. Like now I could actually do everything that I love doing. Right. So arranging colors, creativity. Um, I was the, I was the innovator. I was the creator of these recipes. I wasn't following a recipe and I found that food was almost like a metaphor to my originals, you know, my internal original sense that I am the creator of my own recipes. I did. I define what life really is for me. And I'm not going to look for outside validation for that, you know? And so when I started to work with food and I realized, wow, this is so much fun. I love what I'm doing from the heart, right? For the people I love. So I'm cooking these meals for the people I love. And I'm realizing after some time, people started asking for my recipes and I had no recipes to share with them because I wasn't writing things down. I wasn't following rules. I was breaking the rules. I was creating my own. And I started to give people recipes, but I wasn't really sure how accurate it would turn out because I was <laughs> you know, old, your old grandma who just kind of in the kitchen, you know, cooking up a storm. So I was like, one day I had like this, this like light switch come up and it was like, well, maybe I can teach in person and they can take the notes down and I can teach them how to 
how to tweak the recipes, how to change them up, just give them a base to start with, but it's all about energy. And so what I was really wanting to teach is energy, hmm. not just recipes and food and you know results. It's just like, if you put your energy into the meal that you're cooking, let's say, like I said, coming from the heart, your food's gonna turn out delicious. If you're nervous, your food's gonna taste nervous. It's gonna be stressful. You know, there's chefs out there in the world who are like, they're having a bad day. Sometimes their food really, is, gonna like there's energy going into that meal it's just like drinking water and having an intention and you set an intention and the water is actually very um energetic energy is the goal here in everything that i do right positive energy authentic energy um creating colors and um just just being positive you know having a positive mindset and so i put a post on social media it said cooking class is coming soon i had no idea no idea what was going to happen. Like I just, just set an intention. I didn't have anything planned out. I don't know where it was going to be, when it was going to be, who it was going to be with. I just put a post with four words, cooking classes coming soon. And since that time, I'm telling you the amount of response that I was receiving from my community, from my friends and family. I mean, they were still kind of confused because I, as it was I, but they were excited. And that excitement fueled me, you know, like that's where passion and excitement meet each other. And it's just like, you know, so I started cooking classes from my house with one stove, a small kitchen and, you know, just like getting creative. I purchased some aprons, got really creative, some chef, you know, paper chef hat and kids started coming over. Kids were learning how to bake and cook. I didn't even realize that I had a gift with these children. I, I can tell you. I am the kid whisperer now. Um, and so I started working with kids, families. I started hosting family reunions where people who were living outside of state would all come back to Detroit and they would actually hold, I would host a reunion, a family cooking reunion for them. Yeah, so it took me two years of doing private events from homes and from my own home until I was able to open up my own culinary school here in Metro Detroit. As soon as I opened up my, my culinary school, it opened up opportunity for corporate team building events. So I have major companies like Ford Motor Company and GM and Google here in Detroit and LinkedIn. I have teams coming in in person or virtually. Wow. So, you know, um, we host that. We host field trips for schools. They come on yellow school buses. The teachers and the kids get to cook together and bake together. So at the end of the day, it's about building relationships. It's about impacting people for the better to be creative to be innovators. Um, I teach in my kitchen with my team. Um, we teach happiness. We, we teach, um, we, we provide, how about this? We provide an environment that will activate in the students around us um, a freedom, a freedom to express themselves and to express themselves through food. And so we love, love, love what we do. Thank you. <laughs> Holy smokes. There is so much that's fascinating there. I love, I wrote it down, cooking classes coming soon. That's got to be a metaphor for so many people's lives who just say, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I don't even, th there isn't a recipe right now. There's no plan. I don't even know where we're going to cook or I don't know what we're going to do, but there's a dream exists. I woke up in the middle of the night and you know what? I want to try something or I've always been curious if I could do this and you just put it out there and you went for it. Um, I think it's beautiful. This is our friend, Anisha Owens. Uh, Anisha is with Walk-Ons. Hi, Anisha. Uh, Walk-Ons is an awesome chain out of uh, Louisiana. Uh, I like to say my ancestors tell me when to stop with seasoning, <laughs> LOL. And my boys will ask me not to cook when I'm not in the best of mood because they've realized my meals aren't as good when my energy is off. Look at that, 100% agree. Anisha, Thanks for the feedback. That's amazing. It's not something I'd even ever considered before. That's right. Um, holy cow. Amazing. Um, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so many questions. Um, when, when you're now hosting these corporate events, mm -hmm. Ford and LinkedIn, I mean, all these great companies with some amazing teams who are coming to you to say, Hey, help us use food as a medium to bring us together, right. to learn something, generate energy, connect us. When, when did you start this? Like how long has it been since when you said cooking class is coming soon to where you are now? Wow. So my legal work says January, 2016. <laughs> okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Love it. 
<laughs> the root the root is actually uh september 2015. <laughs> awesome okay so you I started you, for like four months i would say it's not illegal it's just that i was a trial right i was figuring yeah. out i was like literally like from scratch you know what i mean i was People still ask me, like, how did you come up with this? I'm like, it came up with me. I, I'm truly living my purpose. Like, I'm truly aligned with my purpose in this life. It's like, it was already created before I was born, but I was, like, chosen to, like, do this. You know, I truly believe that. And so that's why I love what I do. And I, I'm so passionate about it because it's like it found a home. And it's not like I found a home. It found a home. And now I'm, like, really taking care of it like it's a baby, you know. And I, I love it so much. So... I'm sorry. What was your question? Because no, 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 that was it. Kind of when did be? I mean, I love it. I feel like there's a lot of people who I hear if I listen to, um, you know, <laughs> how I built this, you know, that it's podcast or things like that. There's so many people, for lack of a better phrase, who are just kind of minding their own business, and yeah. this idea, this thing, exactly. kind of hits them on the head. Um, yeah, people are always like, "How do I find my purpose? How do I find it? How do I find it?" You don't find it. You just do things that your intuition tells you to do. Just like my intuition told me, experience different jobs, meet different people, learn different cultures. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like I had to follow my intuition. Those were the signs and the baby steps that were leading me towards the purpose to show up. I gave myself fine. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you take, because here's, here's how it is. It's now eight years since the first dream kind of manifested, right? Like the purpose showed up eight years. It's literally like you're planting seeds in the ground and you have to water. It's going to take time for that tree to grow. You're not going to expect everything to happen overnight. That's why they say a breakthrough or an overnight success takes at least 10 years in the making. This is all the hard part. What I'm going through right now, <laughs> like this is the journey that I'm on to get to my breakthrough. And no one's going to give me the breakthrough. I am the breakthrough. It's just a matter of time before it happens to where Z the cook breaks through the world. Like I'm going to like be all over the world. But here's the thing, because <laughs> I already know I can feel it the same way I felt it when I was a young child. I can feel it. I still don't have it all figured out. But all I know is to live in the moment, to follow my heart, to follow my intuition, to guide me, because I know that what's coming is, is, is outrageous. Like I'm really excited. And so I tell people all the time quiet the noise, eliminate toxic energy from your life. If you have a stressful uh, relationship or relationships in your life, right? I had to lose a lot of people. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of sacrificing that goes on during a journey of living your purpose and, and, and impacting the world for the better, right? And like living true to who you are, you have to, and you, it's like, I'm telling you, you'll hear it everywhere. Not just from me. You're going to lose people. You're going to lose people. And you're, you have to, you have to, it's like a radical change. You have to radically shift who you always have been to who you were meant to be, who you were actually born to be. And I always say, Jason, the higher self is who we were born to be. We were already born our higher self, but what happens is the world conditions you, programs you, and blinds you from who you truly were meant to be. And so I think us as humans, it's our journey through life is to um see again it's to see again it's to it's to really get out of the toxic programming and the conditioning of the past and like what your family your friends your culture your religion what everyone has tried to like distract you with you and that with that comes a lot of changes again like i said losing people um changing environments maybe moving there's changes that have to take place so your true identity comes out so now I can proudly say that, yes, I'm in my true, authentic presence. And now I just want to spread that and I want to push it forward in the world. And I want I want to help other people do the same. Well, I think it's beautiful. It's almost like that, um, you know, like the statue David, you know, chiseled out of a, a block of stone. Yes. And it's, it's almost like there's this element where there are tools that we can utilize to chisel out, chisel the way uh, away the things that aren't really us that maybe get in the way that blind us, et cetera. Like you spoke oh to this is our friend, Jennifer, who I think, you know, um, <laughs> or you met probably at a conference. Jennifer says, several of us know how amazing your impact is and truly think you could have an impact on the child trauma area that has so little focus and you could have such an incredible <laughs> impact on our children and our teens. Jennifer, 
Wow, that is really yeah. profound. Um, God willing, I will. What? Let me ask you this: What percentage of your work, just roughly, is spent working with kids? Kids are coming into your culinary academy, working either with you or you've got other cooks that work with all, you know all these people booking time with you. Uh, yeah. How many of them are kids? So we have a team of 16 here and um, I would say about 50% of my business is focused on kids, Gen Z um, and um, teens, teenagers and kids. Yes, 50%. Working with kids is actually, um, it's like, how can I explain this? I mean, even the parents think that we're crazy. Like they walk in, they're like, how do you do this all day? Like, how do you do this? Like I said, it's it's like, I, I feel so connected to this innocence right these children they're they're still innocent and they're either going to and you know how they say it, it takes a community it takes a village right to raise a child this is my position as z the cook when i work with kids and teens i'm able to impact them at least because i don't know what's going on at home no one knows what's happening in people's homes no one knows if these kids are getting complimented if they're being um driven if they're being impacted in a positive way like so i know what i can do and I'm going to do what I can do in my space, in my environment, with my teams. There's words that we say. There's the way we say it. There's, like, the kids, thank God, like, I'm not saying this because it's my business. They just never want to leave, you know? There's an energy here that we provide. And by the way, Jason, it's not something you can put in a textbook. It's just that when we live true to who we are, it shines through. It, it actually um, is contagious, okay? Energy is contagious. Again, we take this back to energy. I do things in my life that will help to promote my authenticity and it sh and it's this energy um it impacts the kids and the teens around me to and they feel it right kids can feel energy they know if somebody is like a babysitter or a nanny is good or not right they can tell so kids they they feed off this energy because if I'm not showing up in my true essence and my true authentic self empowered positive happy and light then they're not they're here to feed off my energy. And so that's why I always tell my teams as well, which has been a little bit of a challenge, I'm not going to lie, is finding team members who share the same vision, who are here to make a difference and an impact in these children's lives, right? I mean, I thank God I have them. I've been That's why we've been around for eight years. But it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. And so believe it or not, now I have students who started with me eight years ago. They were kids. And now they're actually working at Z the Cook. And they're, old, uh, they're 18-year-olds and 17-year-olds who are working summer camp programs here. So they started off as students and now their employees getting paid. Wow, amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think a couple of things to based on what you just said that I really agree with. Number one, but before we went live, you yeah. and I connected real quick. We always do this. Every guest that comes on the show, we connect a few minutes early to make sure that the cameras are working and the microphones are working, all this kind of stuff. And I had my daughter come in to meet you. And that was very intentional. Um, because we have a wonderful relationship, but there's, you know, parents only have so much say to some degree, like, you know, every kid needs influences outside of their parents exactly. and people exactly. to engage with people to meet. And so for both my kids, there's this real intentionality amongst my wife and I to say, okay, who do we want her to meet? And who is someone that's kind of within her vibe, you know, who feels like her, who has the same style or energy or whatever it is. And so before we came on tonight, I said, Hey, Haley, I want you to meet Z. Like, Aww. like you guys are kind of a lot alike in some ways. So yes. number one, I think kids coming into your place and meeting people who are intentionally recognizing this is so important for them because yeah. yeah. every kid needs voices outside of their home to look up to, listen to, yeah. and engage with. The mm -hmm. second thing I think is, you know, you mentioned they need to see it. People need to see it. Story is the great motivator. Yeah. We can go tell someone, Hey, follow your passion. We can say it a million times. We could just say that this entire conversation, hey, everybody go follow your passion. But until you watch someone who's living that experience, yeah. who made a decision in their life to say cooking class is coming soon before they even had a recipe or a, or an oven or whatever it was, mm -hmm. um, it's it, you can't believe it until you watch someone who's done it. And so I think having you and team members who are living that out is so important for people to see in order to incorporate that in their own lives. Yes, it's so important. You have to lead by example and your role model. You're role modeling this for the community and for children and for their parents too. I mean, listen, I have parents who call me sometimes and they're like, you know, you you made them come out of their shell. They were so shy before and now they're like so social and they really want to come back and they they want to like eat foods they've never eaten before. And you know what I mean? So 
for us, we're very grateful for that. We're very grateful for the impact that we're able to like make in the world. And I love working with families too. Like when I have my mom, my mom and dad or mom and dad and kids events, like the family events, you're watching these kids cooking and measuring ingredients and maybe sometimes even arguing with their parents, which is all good. It's all good. They're connecting, they're speaking, their emotions are coming out. You know, they're building that relationship. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to build these relationships in a positive environment and in an inspiring environment so that people are building memories they can turn back to for the rest of their lives and be so proud and happy for that. Uh, amazing, Z. Amazing. Thank um, you. Yeah, this is incredible. I'm going to take uh, a little bit of a left turn. Sure. Um, <laughs> any in your life, any disciplines that you adhere to, habits in your life that you practice that help you, whether it's stay on track with pursuing that passion and vision and building, like anything that you, you know, are you someone that always has the pillow perfectly flat when you leave your room in the morning or like anything in your life that you do? Great question. Um, I'm actually, I feel like I'm a product of my environment. So my environment is very important to me. Um, it should be, it should be clean. It should be organized. It should be creative. Um, I can't say every day it's like that, but for the most part, yes, it is. I have a neat life. Um, I really am inspired my, by my environment. So sometimes I leave my, my culinary school, even my home, and I just go to downtown Detroit just to be in a setting that's inspiring me, a city vibe, high buildings, business suits everywhere. For me, it's all about the environment. So I like to surround myself with positive um, environments, <laughs> positive people. I like to protect my energy. That's 100%. So sometimes less is more, you know, I find myself sometimes in a lonely world, but I appreciate that time with Z to recharge so that when I'm at a conference or at a summit or doing team building events, I have so much power to give because people will either deplete you or empower you, you know, mm -hmm. and it's very important that you protect your energy. You, you share um, with like-minded people and you also can give those who need to receive from you to empower them. I always have so much to give because I spend a lot of time alone. And when I spend that time alone, I go inside, I travel within. And I always say the source, you can call it God, whatever you want. For me, it's God. Whoever created the moon, the sun, the stars, the clouds, the trees, nature, that's where you find the source. It's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And when you can connect with that source, it's just going to shine out. You know what I mean? Like I say to everyone, everything you're looking for is already within you. Like it's a quote that I've you know, heard from like, you know, so many different areas of my life, but it's so true. And I, my, like I, my daughter, like last week was like, I was out of town. She sends me a message and she's like, I don't like, you know, I'm, I'm lonely. And I said, it's okay. You should actually like be lonely. It's like, be with you, be with yourself. I understand what you're saying. And I just want, when I got back from my trip, she was showing me these like selfies that she was taking and these great pictures she was taking. She's like, mom, she's like the night before I cried myself to sleep. She's like, but the following day, I felt this type of powerful energy inside of me. And I said, Mirna, sometimes you have to water your soul. You have to cry. You have to let out your emotions. You have to feel any pain that you are going through. Because if we don't feel our pains and we don't feel our emotions, we're going to suppress that. And it's going to show up in our bodies. We're going to have pain in our bodies, right? The somatic. And it's going to also be toxic to the world, right? You're going to end up projecting that to other people, to other areas. So I always say, like, make it a habit to surround yourself with positive energy and good vibes and to also be that person for others. Um, and, of course, to still feel the negatives, right? We all have negatives. Like, yeah. we all have bad things come and go, right? But it's just learning how to, like, surf the waves. Surfing the waves is a great analogy. Being present in whatever is um, matters so much to Jennifer. Amazing. I know you've helped create their future. Congrats. Here's another, here's a great question from Jennifer. How can we support you creating this amazing environment nationally? Great question, Jennifer. What, what does it look like for this community to support what Z the cook is doing? Honestly, I would love to contract with companies uh, worldwide to be a independent contractor who will uh, bring people back to the office to bring um, families of employees to come together and do workshops to empower the employees and their families. Um, also, we can do competitions between the employees um, to make it fun and energetic at the work 
place or in a teaching kitchen. I can do these things virtually like COVID hit. And immediately I put feeling together, whoops, feeling together while apart. So immediately reward your team from working from home to feel together while they're apart. And this is like literally my card, right? Like to boost their creativity, to encourage teamwork, to inspire innovation. So we do these virtually, which I love because COVID, it was a scary time for a lot of people, right? It was scary for me. I was one of the first businesses to shut down because I'm, I'm here bringing people together and now I can't bring people together anymore, right? So I was afraid, like just like everyone else, I was afraid, but I had to get out of my comfort zone. And as soon as I went virtual, I opened up a new revenue stream for my company and that blew up. So now I'm actually able to reach people all over the world. Now I'm able to still do what I love and inspire like employees. Not only are they working together on screen through Zoom, but their family members in the kitchen are now assisting them. So not only are they building relationships amongst the team, but they're also building the relationships up at home all at the same time. So I'm telling you like, I'm very grateful for that. And I would love to do that for companies all over the world. Like I would love to have a Z the Cook ambassador in every company around the world where I can teach them how to do these programs and so on. So yeah, there's so many um, ways that we can all impact each other's lives for the better. See, amazing. I just got a um, note for some reason that, that StreamYard is struggling to get on LinkedIn right now. So Jennifer, I hope you heard that and hopefully it comes back. Um, that's kind of a new one for me, but we'll, uh, we'll keep rocking. That was, I mean, your pivot and your ability to connect people. And I love it. Feel, um, I think you hit the nail on the head, you, you know, I mean, even sales is such an emotional experience. If you can com communicate and convey emotion, if you can make someone feel something, right. feel some hope of what you're offering or the hope of connecting their teams and what that means, um, that is, uh, that's massive. Um, okay. Outside of Z the cook, um, what, it, what is fun for you look like? What do you do for fun? I love to travel. Uh, traveling is so important to me because, um, again, like I said, I'm, I'm, I very, um, I have like this universal mindset, which is like continuously learn and grow. And so for me, fun is learning and growing that I do that by traveling. I do that by meeting new people, by, um, learning new things. And so I love to travel when I can. Um, and I love to work out. I, I'm I'm into fitness. I do some boxing, um, and um, I'm tr I'm trying to challenge myself. So, for example, meditation and yoga. It's like something that's very difficult for me to do because I'm more into like the like too much energy, like getting the energy out, right? So I'm like at the boxing ring, like with a, a trainer, and I'm just but to calm Z. Not only am I calming my world, but to calm Z. That was um, a challenge for me. I'm just starting now to get into meditation. And as soon as I can master meditation, I'll get into yoga. Um, just Not just to get into it, to get into it, but to get into it because I'm challenging myself. Yeah. Well, for me, fun is, is, is growing and learning and, and expanding and just, you know, doing things that feel good. <laughs> and for you, I, I have a feeling... When you talk about these new things that are a challenge, yoga's hard. I get that. You're someone who's uh, things that are higher energy. Let's engage there. Trying new things that are challenging. I have a feeling you're comfortable that not doing something well is okay. Like you, like failure isn't a bad word to you. It's amazing. I failure is like, come on, bring it. You know what I mean? Like that's how I feel about failure. It's like let me keep failing because I'm gonna keep winning anyway, right? So like let me keep failing and let me keep winning. Let me keep failing and let me keep winning. Um, yeah, I, I I like to be. I know that you know everyone knows. Everyone who's watching right now, we're all you know kind of coming from the same world somewhat. Getting outside of your comfort zone is where you grow, right? So you have to get out of your comfort zone. So for me, I, I assess between me and myself. I'm not competing with any other company. I'm not competing with any other small business or medium-sized business, nothing. I'm always competing with Z. I'm always competing with what I did yesterday, what I did last month, what I did last week. And I and that's me spending time with myself, right? When I'm spending time with myself, and I say that I spend time with myself a lot, I'm asking myself questions and I'm answering those questions. Z, what can you do differently? Z, what scares you? How could you overcome that fear? And then I go on and I search and I listen to audibles or podcasts and I learn, you know? And so I address my questions with actions and then it happens. And then I get better. So like now 
I feel so strong. Like I was so afraid of boxing and I was so afraid of getting a trainer because I knew that they were going to be in my face holding me accountable. And it, and if I was in a group setting, I could hide in the corner <laughs> and be weak. So I, it took me like three months to be like, all right, that's it. I'm doing it. I'm going to invest my money and time. Now, after three sessions, only three sessions, I'm ready to go for my fourth. I was so scared all summer long, but now it's like, wow, wow, this feels great. <laughs> Good for you, Z. Oh my gosh. Um, Zena Dater, love this, right? Zena, I'm with you. I love this too. That's yeah. amazing. Um, uh, thank you both for this. Seriously, I appreciate every S FSPN live I attend. This one, I personally needed more than professionally. Pies coming soon. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thanks for joining us. Chuck, Z, keep up the great work. I felt your energy and passion the first time we met at your teaching kitchen. Uh, keep up the positive message flowing. Chuck, um, we saw Chuck last week in Chicago together. In Chicago as well. Thank you, Chuck. He's been here to my culinary school as well from Ohio. So, so rad. Chuck, yes. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, Z, in the last five years, is there a belief, behavior, or new habit you've taken on that's most positively impacted your journey? Yes. And I know I brought this up many times, but I learned to validate myself and um, to, I, I really had to learn, Jason, in these five years that not to take it so serious when people have opinions of you. And um, you know what I mean? Like I, I had some very close people in my life who were just very toxic. It took me a long, long, long time to like unlock myself from that, that energy, you know? And, and the best thing I've ever done for myself, the best thing was take care of Z, not take care of the whole world, but just take care of Z. Yeah. Because when I finally took care of me, I, I started to grow personally and professionally. Like it was first like survival mode and now it's thriving. Now I'm thriving, right? First it was like for a long time in this company and in my personal life, I was always in survival mode and I didn't know why I could not figure it out. It took so long for me to realize that my environment was affecting me the way it was, right? Relationships. Yeah. So I, I don't want to waste any time. We only have one life to live. We only have one chance at this. Okay. And so when I finally, with the life coach's help, I obviously you need help, right? So again, yeah, this takes it back to my life coach. So my life coach he doesn't, I haven't even met him in person, but he lives in the Netherlands. And yeah, and and we meet four hours once a month. And I'm telling you, having someone from a different world, a different culture, a different race, a different religion, come in on the screen and speak these words into me and, and, and let me speak. There was an opportunity for me to finally figure out that wait a minute, the life I've always known isn't the only reality. Yeah. There's other realities out there. There's other possibilities. <laughs> so, wow, like that was a green light in my life that was like, ooh, my whole world, like kind of, oh, you know, just rumbled like a hurricane. It was crazy. So so when that happened and I, I surrounded myself with mentors, with great coaches, um, and, and with good, you know, healthier people who believed in me, that changed my my whole journey, you know. Mm -hmm. Before you surround yourself with people who are doubting you, who who maybe project their fears onto you, and you talk about your dreams to the wrong people, that can get very that can go very bad. So I, I always want to remind everyone to surround yourself with people who love and believe in you for real. Uh, really brilliantly said, um, Malik. Hi, I hope I pronounced your name right. Yes, yes, yes. Hearing this helped me realize this as well, finding your inner self and stay out of the toxic, take care of yourself first. I mean, great um, summary. You're totally right. I mean, that whole analogy of put the oxygen mask on yourself on the plane before others is so true. There's this great quote. Um, was it Howard Thurman? I can't remember who it was, who said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive. Yeah. Because what the world needs is more people who have really come alive. Exactly. And um, so when you take care of Yuzi and you talk about not taking care of everyone else, and I feel like 
there's this metamorphosis that happens in so many people, yeah. this, you know, cocooning the butterfly experience where people oh, who generally have a huge heart, who care about other people who say, I need to put everyone else first. And you put yourself not even second or third, you're like way at the bottom of the list. And then eventually that well is dry and there's not much for anyone else, let alone you. And yeah. there's this period where you're like, you know what, what does it even look like to care for me? How do I take care of me? What do I even love? What makes me come alive? What brings me life? You start cultivating those, really putting energy to it. And you find that now all of a sudden you've got things for everyone else. And oh. I, I think you said it really, really wonderfully. Yeah, it's more powerful than ever because at first you're trying to make everyone else happy, right? Like if you're a relative or, you know, let's say, you know, you're doing everything for everyone else. Like what makes them happy? Okay, what's going to make you happy? What's going to make you happy? you know, at some point you are going to get depleted and, you know, it's, it's the best thing that can actually, you know, everyone has a journey. Like I hear people all the time going through things. I never tell them what to do. This is their journey. They need to go through what I, you know, everyone needs to go through what they need to go through to like, I would say pay their dues right in this life and to, in, in the journey. Again, I always remind people that the test is to unlock, to like bring mm -hmm. out your emotions, speak them up into the world, like get it out of your system it's a rebirth. Honestly, Jason, it's a rebirth. Like once you can get through the spiritual awakening, like this whole idea of, of, of a tapping into your higher self and your future self, it's the best thing that can ever happen to anyone. You feel lighter, you feel light, you feel um, very powerful and very confident. It feels great. And I, I wish it for the everyone. I really wish it for everyone. I, I, I feel it. I know you do. Um, was there a, uh, who's this? Let's see who this is. Um, Keep up the great work, Z. Uh, I'm trying to see who this is. Thank you. I can't Z see, but enjoyed seeing you and Jason at Fed last week. Yo, friend, I, whoever you are, I can't see the comment, unfortunately, in Facebook. But hi. Um, <coughs> question, Z. Uh, we, we all go through, yeah, you've referenced some of them. Uh, we all go through ups and downs. Sure. Um, maybe you said it's like surfing. Um, you know, you're at the crest of, crest of the wave sometimes, and sometimes you're just waiting for a wave to come. Right. Was there a challenge in your experience that you, you got through that you said, you know what, I really learned a ton about who I am getting through this challenging experience. Yeah. Um, I would have to take it back to like maybe a personal dilemma. Um, I went through a divorce and I would mm -hmm. say that the divorce was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, only because I, and I have no regrets for the marriage. The marriage was what it was, but it was so helpful in helping me discover Z. Um, because even though you might go through certain relationships in your life, let's just say they weren't the best, at least they route you towards what you don't want in your life, right? So like, if you can get out of something that wasn't healthy for you, or was not um, connecting with who you truly were authentically, then once you release yourself from it, now you can make better decisions moving forward. So hmm. for me, I had to learn how to forgive myself for things that I did and said and went through when I didn't know any better. But when you know better, you do better, right? So because I went through what I went through, I went through that journey, you know, you go through the darkness and in a sense, like the challenges and the darkness, once you can release that, now you're embarking on a new, whole new fresh page. Imagine, imagine having a fresh start. Yeah. That fresh start is your opportunity to not repeat past mistakes, to not repeat the same cycles, to actually eliminate, um, um, you know, the, the generational the endless generational, uh, let's say curses, like you can even call them anything. But I had an opportunity, like I said, to like be reborn again after a decision for a personal relationship to go down, you know, to like let go of it. Um, and that really helped me. That really, really helped me. And I wish him the best. Of course, he's a great father to my children and everything. That's the thing about ending a relationship or a divorce is that you aren't supposed to stay upset with each other. The whole purpose of the divorce is to now be okay right? If you're in a marriage, right? And it's all toxic. And it's like, you know, let's just say it wasn't as healthy as you would want it to be. When you are out of it, you have to like, as you heal, you shut out the past. It is what it is. But now you have to move forward. And having that, on, you know, that onward mindset has been everything for me, my children, my family, um, my business. So again, a fresh start, nothing, there's nothing better than it. But yeah, for me, it was life. it was personal challenges. Otherwise, I mean, like I said, with, comp with business and me, myself, 
I've always followed my heart. Wow, Z, thanks for sharing that. And I, I think that's beautiful. I mean, wh what did you say? You know, there's, I, I don't know what the percentage of, I think half the uh, couples that get married get divorced. And you said so beautifully, like the goal isn't that we keep struggling together. It's yeah. that we we try something new in the hopes that we can work together now, you know, raising kids or getting along. And I, I think that's some beautiful perspective. And it sounds that's like you guys are doing a great job of that. Yeah, you got to leave the past in the past, you know? Yeah. Um, well done. I, th that's one of the hardest lessons in life. I feel like at times is the amount of, um, someone described it to me once as like an emotional backpack, you know, like we carry around this backpack with emotions from 30, yeah. 40, 50 that's years ago yeah, and these experiences. And oftentimes because we just don't know how to not, frankly, we don't know how to let things go or we don't, maybe we haven't worked through with someone or have someone help us, but um, really good job. Thanks for And I would say like the way to let go is to just move forward, like focus on you and your well being and the positive, right? So like as long as you're like connected to the past and the and the let's say the bad things that have happened to you, you're gonna stay there forever. Just like I'm not saying to ignore it, because obviously a healing is a process and it takes sometimes years and stages. It, it's gonna happen. Like I said, there's gonna be the waves. You gotta learn how to ride the waves and remember it's the mindset. Instead of focusing on what's not working, focus on what is working. Hmm. So where you put your mindset and you're actually intentional with your decision making, right? So that's why I was like saying, you are the pilot of your life. Like you are flying the plane. You decide if you want to stay in that energy or not. And if you made a decision to end it, ending means ending. You need to start and move forward. Yeah. So in the mindset, where do you want to go? We, uh, we find what we look for, don't we, Z? Exactly. Um, Mark Cruz. Thank you both for this great conversation. Positivity always wins. Mark, oh man, talk about one of the most amazing people I know is you, my friend. Um, uh, okay, finish this statement. I am happiest when? <sighs> when I'm traveling. <laughs> there you go. I'm happiest when I'm traveling. I love to travel. What is it about traveling that you love so much? Is it airplanes? You just love airplanes? Um, it, it could be anything. It could be a train, an airplane. It could be any form of, tra of travel. Um, I don't know if it has to do with my my horoscope, my personality. I'm a Sagittarius, but we're natural adventurers, explorers, right? When I'm traveling, I know that I am aligned with my authenticity. So traveling for me is an action of my true essence of who I am and what I like to do. So yeah, I feel great when I do that. I don't feel like I'm being um, held down. Like, I don't feel like I'm being caged in a sense because I like to explore. And so for me, traveling is a way to explore. Good for you. I love it. I love it. Um, perception is everything. Who is this? Oh, this is our friend Kimberly Boyles down in Texas. Hi, Kimberly. Perception is everything. You are spot on. How we shift our perspective on the events in our lives keeps us stuck or it helps us grow. Thank you for sharing. Really well said. And, um, you know, one of the tenants of the food service power plan, or we talked about it a minute ago, I said, it, we find what we look for. Yeah. If we find things that, um, that stink in our lives. We're going to find things that stink. If we find things to be grateful for things that are good, doesn't mean we don't recognize whether it's challenges or we don't acknowledge things that are hard or moments that we could have done better. I mean, you don't acknowledge each of those things. Of course we have to being positive. Isn't putting your head in the sand and just ignoring the realities of the world or ourselves. Exactly. But generally speaking, if we can look at it and acknowledge it, let's look for that, which we want to find. Um, and you will always find what you look for. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Z, um, how do you define success? What does success mean to Zia the Cook? Well, uh, I'm sure that many have said this before, but it, it, you know, for me, success is knowing that I've made an impact in somebody's life for the better. It just makes me happy to make other people happy. So that's just always been something for me. It's like, even if I compliment somebody at a coffee shop, or even if I have a nice gift to give somebody, you know, or I help, you know, a family member or just like for me, giving is success. And, um, and, I, I've had to learn over time as well to give Z, right? So like like when we talked about, you know, you're there for everyone else, but not yourself, you have to give you too. And for me, success means, you know, being true to who you are, living authentically, 
um, and taking action on your beliefs, right? Because I had the, the same beliefs I have today. I had them since I was younger, but like it was such a heavy world, right? The world was so heavy and, 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 and just getting the weight off your shoulders and off your mind and your heart and your soul. When you remove the weight, it's like, okay, now I can take actions on the beliefs that I had since I was younger, you know, and that's success to me. Money, it comes and goes. You got to pay the bills. You have to like grow a company. Let's just say for me, it's like the more money I can make, the more I can pour back into others, the more I can pour back into growing the purpose of what I'm actually trying to do. Right. So for me, success is being able to impact people's lives for the better. Well, I think you're uh, you're going to be able to say. I, I think you're able right now yes, to say exactly. that you're living your success because exactly. the amount of people whose lives you're impacting is seems pretty profound. Z, thank you. I'm very. Um, tell us what is. Um, you're someone who looks ahead. You see where you want to be. Your um, cooking class is coming soon. You said at one point. Yeah. What is Z the cook in 2023? What is soon? What is next? Like, how do we engage with you and your company in the next year? Great question. Um, so yeah, although I do live in the moment because the future is the future and the past is the past, I do live in the moment, but I could see, I can envision, I can feel things because again, I made room for that to arrive into my life. And I, I wanted to say it's by elevating your frequency. So we have like energetic frequency and there's some things we do in life that lowers our vibrational energy and some things in our life that elevate our vibrational energy. So when you do things you love, when you serve your soul, when you're good to yourself, you elevate your frequency. And when you're not doing those things, you're low. But when you're low, you can't receive these visions. You can't receive what the world's trying to tell you. So thank God that I've been able to in the last six months really work on myself personally, professionally. Um, and make room for this. But I can already see the future in the sense that I will be working with global companies. I would like to see, I do see myself on stages, um, doing presentations, talking about the recipes of life skills, the recipes of friendship, the recipes of love, the recipes of success, and how everyone has within them their own recipe. And I'm only here to remind them that they are the creator of their own world um, and doing workshops in other people's teaching kitchens. Um, all over the world, right? Being invited to companies to host a workshop, host a team building event, whether it's between employees, CEOs, families for the companies. I can see it. I feel it. I know it's already happening. Like, it's really interesting, actually, like how that feeling feels. But um, it's only a matter of time before it goes into action. And I'm excited to see who these companies will be. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Heck yeah. I love it. Well, I have a feeling that everything you're hoping for, I mean, you're already doing it. It's already moving that direction. You're experiencing it now. And Z, I just want to thank you for bringing your authentic self to our community. Clearly you've made an impact tonight on so many people commenting and thanking you for the work you've done. People have met you. Um, before we say goodnight to everybody, I want to read just one comment from a friend. One friend that we share in common is, is a gentleman named Matt Rigney. Matt, you know Matt, <laughs> and um, and he's become a buddy through the Power Plant Network. And I said, "Hey, you know Z?" Or and he said, "I love Z because he reached out to me actually when I announced we were doing this." He's like, "Oh my gosh, killer oh. conversation, great guest!" Thank and I you. said, "Tell me a little bit about Z." And here's what he said: "I met Z in Palm Springs at the National SHFM conference. I remember speaking with her and saying to myself." Here is the future of not only food service, but of confident women being leaders. Z has a confidence in her that we encourage in our own girls. I look forward to seeing where her journey takes her and hopefully we'll be lucky enough to work with her on future projects. Oh my gosh. I love you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, I, I love that comment. I mean, it's it's the reason why I brought my daughter in to meet you before we went live, right? Okay, and she's saying, we encourage this in our own girls and Z you're owning it and you've walked a journey. You've learned, you're constantly learning. There's hard moments, there's wonderful moments and you're living an authentic life and it's making an incredible impact. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You got it. Look at this. Uh, as always, thanks Jason for bringing Z to us and thank you Z for sharing such an inspirational message 
Heck yes. Uh, that is our friend Deirdre Flynn, who joined us last week from NAFM. Hi, D. Um, incredible conversation. Uh, oh, here we go. I second that. Agree, Matt. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer's got gotcha. you. I love it. Uh, Jennifer, both of us hope we get to see you sometime soon. Maybe at FIDA this week. I don't know where we'll be. Maybe at NAFM in, in uh, February, but love it. Listen, everyone, I, I mean, oftentimes I try to summarize something that stood out from a conversation or offer it to our community. And good Lord, Z, you gave me like a million things to run with. And um, what would I offer? You, you know, probably the thing that I kept coming back to, um, cooking class is coming soon. Everyone... I totally believe each of us has something or maybe a lot of things inside that we look forward to creating. You know, yes. when when I, I shared last week at the Fed Talks um, in terms of creating a vision for my life, I wrote my first vision statement when I was 31 and um, dreamt out what what I what is my ideal life look like? What does our family look like? What does my career look like? How do I feel physically? You know, yes. all of these things. And just dreamt wildly. All of it at that time was beyond my wildest dreams. And I'm fortunate to get to say a lot of that is, is my reality at this point. This is 13 years after the fact that I began doing it. I do it every year. You know, right. Z said, cooking class is coming soon. What is that thing in you? Um, we all have things that make us come alive. Mm -hmm. That it was, oh, who said it? Um, oh my gosh, there's a quote. Um, a Paul, Paulo Coelho said... Um, it's the possibility of having a dream come true, which makes life interesting. Yes. Which I would say is the equivalent of, of creating energy today. It's a future compelling vision of ourselves tomorrow, which gives us energy to today because we are excited about what we're creating, <laughs> excuse me, what we're creating. And so for everyone watching, if you look at Z and you watch this energy coming off of her in her cooking classes for her 16 team members, the way she engages with the industry and think, you know what, that's something I'd like to cultivate more in my life. What is your equivalent of cooking classes coming soon? Um, what is that thing for you? Maybe it's a different, uh, you know, um, maybe you want to start exercising a little bit more. Maybe you want a different role in your job. Maybe you want a different job altogether. There's something you've wanted to have. Um, you know, maybe it's cultivating a hobby that you've always hoped for, but you never have. Maybe it's taking a, one time I took a community college on woodworking because I wanted to learn how to woodwork better. What is okay. it for you? Mm -hmm. Don't limit yourself by what you think is possible. Mm -hmm. Simply dream it. Put it out there. Um, and watch as maybe you start to take action or maybe um, the universe start give, giving you opportunities or people say, hey, I've got this thing I've always wanted. And it hits right in where you're wanting to build something in your life. Um, dream. I, I think it always starts, you know, the food service power plant framework begins with this. Decide what you want to make. A chef, when they're deciding the meal of their dreams, has to decide, what do I want? Am I making prime rib? Do I want it the coolest, newest version of prime rib that's never been cooked this way before? Is it grandma's lasagna with a twist that I used to love as a kid? Is it, what is it? And same is true for our lives. Exactly. So go do some dreaming. Um, listen, if you find yourself, by the way, um, in a tough spot right now, understand that both Z and I can relate to hard moments in life where uh, we can't necessarily see what's next. We can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and um, part of you. Know, so just know that you're not alone. Of course you are. And keep moving. Keep reaching out to people. Connect with people you trust. Share your experience. Reach out to a professional if that would be helpful. Uh, maybe dream about your ideal vision for your life. But know that you're not alone. Of course you are. And uh, keep moving. That light will come. That hope will come. We believe it for you. And um, keep going. Malik, yes. This was amazing to hear. Malik, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you sharing lots of takeaways. Right, Zena? I'm with you there, Zena. Uh, yes, Jason, Malik, I love it. I'm glad it's resonating. Everyone, Food Service Power Plant Network, thank you to, for joining us. Z, thank you for being our guest. Thank you to the Zumba Group and to Craven Company for helping support this mission to affect people in such profound ways, give them hope, give them tools to move forward in their dreams and their ideal vision of their lives. Food Service Power Plant Network, we will be back live here next week, 6 p.m. Mountain with another incredible guest. Everyone have a wonderful night and see you soon. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Thank you, Jason.